talking to Wilma Matthews, and you are city title with you, please. Uh, Director of Constituent Relations in the Office of Office of Public Affairs at Arizona State University. Okay. All right. Well, question number one. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, early influences, uh, first jobs, etc. Where you went to school, all those things. Okay. Bio, so. <laughs> um, I'm a native of Virginia. I grew up in a, a town that was just right on the border of North Carolina, so I got the best of both worlds. Uh, my early influences were books. Uh, my parents uh, had books around my sister and I before we ever knew how to read, and uh, we were always reading. And uh, the public library was, was not too far away for me to walk to, um, and uh, that, was, that was my home for many, many years. In the summer, I'd just be in the library. So that was a very strong influence. Um, and it was only after I got to, actually got to college that I found or realized I had a natural talent for writing. I had never known that. I thought everybody could write. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I, you know, this great discovery came when I was discovered in, in college, as it were. Mm -hmm. My first uh, my first real job out of college was actually at a um, uh, magazine that was published by the Virginia State Chamber of Commerce. Um, it was a very slick monthly magazine. and. Um, loved working there, had a great editor, learned so much from Jim, uh, and his lessons have stayed with me all these years. Uh, my schooling was kind of interesting. I first went to um, a private uh, girls' school for two years, then I went to East Carolina University for a year, then got married, went to Europe, uh, moved to Europe, and went to the University of Maryland European Division for a year and a half and then came back and transferred everything back to another school so that I could finally graduate. But uh, along the way, I ended up with a degree in, uh, I majored in English and double minor in psychology and languages. Awesome. Okay. Uh, would you describe what you do uh, as the scope of your duties, who you report to, and how you measure your success in your job? Okay, in my current position uh, as Director of Constituent Relations, I either represent the university to other organizations or the other organizations back to the university. Uh, there are numerous people who do this. Um, my primary points of contact are for very large organizations like the Valley of the Sun, United Way. I sit on their campaign cabinet. I'm on a couple of committees. I oversee the campaign here because it's a very substantial size. And there are a lot of major connections through uh, at the university and at the United Way. There are a lot of connections to be made between those two organizations. Um, same thing for United Blood Services, the same thing for the Phoenix Library. So these are large connection areas. Um, I report in here to uh, an assistant vice president of uh, community outreach. And um, that whole department looks at relationships with the Hispanic community, with teens, with the, just a number of different constituencies and audiences. Uh, measure success. Um, when nothing goes wrong. <laughs> so it's kind of a negative measure. Um, with the United Way campaign, there are two measures. One, did we make our, our goal for internal campaign, but externally, uh, what kind of relationship do we have with the United Way, with the board, with their foundation, and, and it's, um, or do we have enough collaborative efforts going on? So our success is really all good stuff. Uh, and that, we just nothing should go bad in that process. All right. Uh, what does the phrase public sector marketing mean to you? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up because I've never really thought of myself as being in the public sector, except I am because I'm at a public university. Um, it's, the public sector marketing means uh, validating the faith that the taxpayers have put in you. Uh, the taxpayers give Arizona State a fair sum of money through legislative um, uh, process. And that's important to us to make sure that they get a great return on that investment. So that's what it means to me. Okay. Some people believe that concepts of marketing in pub the public sector are mutually exclusive. Um, do you agree? And if not, why are they wrong? Um, I, I, 
don't agree. Um, not so much that they're wrong, it's just they're perhaps not thinking about it correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you cannot be in the public sector or make use of the public sector without having a marketing connection between the two, mm -hmm. um, either to explain the public sector or to validate what the public sector is doing for non-public sector markets. So. Um, it's, it's hard to look at any sector without connecting marketing to it. Uh, would you share a war story where your side won? Uh, in other words, related really experience that happened at work that is pleasantly memorable to this day. Well, I've got 30 some years in the business, so I'm, I'm, I'm really hard pressed to think of just one where our side won. A lot of times our side wins and nobody can know about it. Right. Uh, and some of the best stories are those situations that never happened mm -hmm. because we saw a situation developing, uh, put the right people on it to just stop it from becoming something else. And so I have war stories that I can't tell you. And I have very long and complicated, wonderful stories that I can tell you, mm -hmm. but they're just too darn long. For example, I can talk about the presidential debate that was uh, that ASU hosted two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we won that, and I could talk for 45 minutes on it. Uh, we won. We entered that competition with other locations. We won. We put on just an, a terrific uh, presidential debate. And very proud of that, but that's that's a long story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Conversely, uh, when you share a story of your side loss, and how did that make you feel? What did you do about it? Hmm. I, I honestly, I have not been able. I've, I've kept coming back to that question, and I honestly can't think of anything that where we consider it a loss. Uh, if if we didn't get what we achieved, it's a lesson learned. But it's never a total loss. Uh, this could be anywhere from something in the political arena to some, in, you know, a donor investing some money. If, if every, we've tried for a lot of things, and so we don't always get what we want. It's not a loss. It's a lesson. And so let's. If we can move on from that, one. <laughs> and it just—it doesn't make me feel bad. It just says, you know, well, we gotta do better next time. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's the most challenging part of this career, and why? I, I think it's trying to um, get that business side of your head in place. Most of us in this field of public relations or communication don't. We want to stay on that softer side of communication, and it is toughest, I think, for us to put on very serious business heads, learn the business, learn the public sector, learn how they work, where the money comes from, where the money goes, how the budgeting process is, how A affects B, and so forth. And that's, over my career, that's where I've seen most uh, young professionals especially have a problem. All right. Well, what's the best part best part is the diversity. My goodness, the things I've been able to do and the places I've been able to go. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the opportunities in this career are exceptional, mm -hmm. and you just have to be open to um, taking advantage of them. How does the information or influence you provide affect the public good? Um, The information I provide comes from a, from a good decision, mm -hmm. and so all I can do is relay that and make sure that, you know, do what I can to help make this the right decision. Um, but from, from an ASU standpoint, the information or influence that we provide, every bit of it is aimed at the public good, whether it's improving education for young children or, from the, or for the kids in the university, making sure we produce graduates uh, who will be workforce ready, who will will stay in the state, become a part of the state, help improve the growth in the economy. So our decisions here that are made on how we're going to do all of that makes it easy for the information that we provide. 
who are the giants of this industry, and uh, what makes them different from everybody else besides their 